What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna look at the Porky Press. Now to begin, I would ask that you all take a second to you know like, subscribe if you haven't yet. That'd be awesome. Um, yeah, and then check out, I'm gonna put down below um, who this is, Swartz Design. Uh, Sheldon did send this to me for free, so I wanna be upfront about that. But what I'm doing in this video is, is somewhat, it's pretty objective, so um, it's not really gonna be affecting what I'm saying. I'm doing a more so of an objective analysis of what this does. I will talk about taste at the end, but you'll see when we get there. Okay, so you're looking at this and you're saying, what the heck is this? I have no idea. I'm gonna read what Sheldon himself says about this tool. Um, but anyway, the Porky Press is here to help reduce channeling, specifically on very finely ground coffee. The tool perforates the coffee puck such that after you tamp, you will leave behind a defined array of less compacted regions. These regions will initially allow water through the entire depth of the puck. Water will then saturate outwards from each of these holes, causing the entire puck of coffee to be fully wet. As the entire puck swells, these holes and other naturally present channels will seal up. So the idea, according to Sheldon, is you have your untamped bed of coffee. You have your untamped bed of coffee. You WDT, do whatever, do whatever putt preparation, preparation you need to do. And then you're gonna take this, and as you see, we have little flaps for the flaps on your portafilter. You're gonna put it on, and then watch. See this, you're gonna go down, and you're gonna perforate the coffee with all those needles. Okay, so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have holes. You're gonna have a holy puck, so there's gonna be holes all over the place, all right? Then you're gonna tamp on top of that, and the speculation, what Sheldon says is, that's gonna cause a less dense puck because you're gonna have all these different little holes in it, though they're still gonna be there even though you won't see them, and so when the water hits it, the water's gonna find these lesser dense areas. It's water's gonna be able to get to the bottom of the puck with less perturbance and is going to be able to give you a more even extraction, okay? And it's gonna seal up those channels when the coffee expands, okay? So that is kind of the philosophy behind it. So the origination of this idea doesn't actually trace back to Sheldon, it predates Sheldon. It goes back to 2016 or so when Matt Perger uh, down at Barista Hustle was playing with this idea with his with uh, Michael Cameron. So they had this idea, they had tools, you can actually see a video I'll link below where they discussed this in 2017, uh, this idea that they've been having and sitting on for the past year when they made that video. So this is a pre-established idea and this is just an engineered version of what they were talking about and very well engineered, I might add. So is that actually what's going on though? Cause I know you're watching this and you're going, there's no way, right? So, you know, we, we can test it out. I know that there have been other videos made on this. There have been other people who have done tests with it and it shows a, a minimal increase in extraction. And so I was wanting to find someone to collaborate with on uh, compiling some data and so I found out a friend of mine from the Espresso Aficionado Discord had already begun doing a study on this and was about to publish a blog. So I talked with him, I corroborated some of his evidence, and I'm gonna to present to you now what Shay has found about what actually happens when you use this. And it is not what you think it is. Dun, dun, dun. So what this actually does, according to his study, I'm just gonna give you the TLDR, or too long didn't watch, TLDW, what this is actually doing is it is not creating those channels. In fact, what it is doing is it is priming your puck to be able to be compressed to a higher density. What? What does that even mean? So I have this blog below so you can, you can look more in depth there. But in short, what's going on is when you create those holes, hypothetically what's going on is you are creating a more susceptible bed for a higher compression when you tamp it. Okay, so that just means whenever you use normal WDT and then you tamp, you have X density. And then whenever you use the Porky Press and then you tamp, you have X density plus a little bit. Okay, <laughs> that's not obviously mathematically correct, but that the idea I'm trying to get is whenever you don't use the Porky Press, you have a lesser dense puck than when you do use the Porky Press. And this is all laid out in his blog. The way he discovered this is he measured the puck density of with WDT and TAMP and then WDT Porky Press and TAMP. The way he measured it was using a methodology outlined by Michael Cooper, not Michael Cameron, who was with Perger, Michael Cooper, who has an Instagram called uh, quantitative cafe. I'll have a link down below. Go check uh, out the work that Michael's doing. It's fantastic data analysis. 
Anyway, by using the, the method that Michael Cooper came up with on how to measure putt density, Shea repeated this experiment four times and found a direct correlation between using the porky press and, the, uh, and not using the porky press as regards the density. So what does that mean? You have higher density when using the porky press. This means that you have been able to take out dead space, more dead space than without using it, which can arguably increase your extraction. Now, I ran the numbers, I did exactly what Shea did, and I found that indeed when you're using really finely ground coffee, you can in fact get higher extractions. And I'll put my numbers up right here. So what I found is when I did a, a, a slow bloom style shot on the Decent, I replicated Shea's parameters almost exactly on the Decent Espresso machine so I could have a consistent output. When I replicated it, I found a one to one and a half percent variance when I wasn't using the Perky Press versus when I was. However, when I first did the experiments, I did not want to have to use some sort of crazy flow profile. I used instead my Breville Dual Boiler, and I used just typical pre-infusion to a nine bar shot. I, did, I wanted to see if this was purposeful for the typical home user who doesn't have you know, an insane machine that allows you to do crazy flow profiles. And what I found was there was little to no difference with or without the porky press. When I was talking to Shea about this, it turns out that the coarser you go in your grind size, the less of an effect this has. And it's because the coarser you go, the less channeling there's going to be in general, because the coarser it is, the less clumping, the less, um, the less higher dense areas in the puck will be occurring for there to be a need for this porky press, which allows for a higher density tamp. So that actually collaborates well with the Chris Hendon paper that I discuss in this video on turbo shots that talks about this volcano effect. Whenever you, you would expect when you start, let's say we have an X, Y axis here. So we're actually going to draw it with my finger and I'm going to do it the opposite direction. I'm going to do it this so it makes more sense for you. Boom. All right. Now down here on the X axis, we have fineness to coarseness. On the Y axis, we have extraction yield. Okay. Fineness to coarseness, extraction yield. Now, if you're thinking about it, the more surface area that you expose when grinding finer and finer, you should be able to go higher and higher and higher until you can't grind fine anymore, right? Theoretically, that's what should happen. But what was discovered in that Hendon paper with turbo shots is that you actually increase, increase, increase until a certain amount, and then you start to decrease extraction. And that is very peculiar. The reason is because as you get finer and finer, it's more and more difficult for the water to go through the puck evenly. A lot of channels become created and you start decreasing your extraction. So what you can do is use this porky press. It allows for a more even extraction, allows for the water to go through it more evenly by breaking up, uh, by, by disallowing some of those clumps that might disallow a higher puck density and, uh, and, and, and forces the water through at a more even rate. Okay, so instead of having the peak be, say, here on our graph, maybe we can move the peak a little higher to over here. You know, so that's kind of what the purpose of this tool is, is when you get into those really fine settings where it's difficult to control channeling, this can help you by increasing your puck density and thereby increasing your extraction yield. Now, let's just ask the question, is this absolutely necessary, even if it does increase it? It depends on what you're looking for in a coffee. I have found that when I do use this side by side with one that I don't use a porky press and where it does work effectively enough to have one or one and a half percent extraction advantage over the other, I have found sweeter shots, okay? And a little more clarity, a little less muddle. And I suspect it's because I'm getting a little less channels and a little higher extraction with, uh, without, with a more even extraction throughout the bed. So maybe I'm getting 23% without the porky press and I have a part of the puck that's 25%, a part that's 20%. Perhaps with this, I'm getting more evenly 24% across the puck. So I'm not getting some undesired flavors from certain parts of the puck that I might in one without the porky press. Of course, this is all speculation. But what I'm trying to get at is I have noticed an increase in my enjoyment of the espresso using the porky press, but only in those shots where you use a fine enough grind where it would make a difference. If you're doing nine bar style shots, or even I did a 20 second pre-infusion nine bar shot, and even there, the differences were so minimal, it didn't really matter if I used the porky press or not. So does this tool matter? It depends on what style of espresso you're drinking. If you're doing darker roasted coffees, it's not gonna do anything for you. If you're doing medium to light to really lightly roasted coffees, and you're doing crazy flow profiles, this can really increase your extraction and can really help with some skewed puck preparation. But is it necessary? That's up for you to decide.
Now, what I'm going to do now, just as proof, because I know you all like this, I'm going to pull two shots. And one of them, I'm going to use a porky press. One, I'm not going to use a porky press. I'm going to quickly measure the extraction, and then we're going to taste it. And I'm going to show you the how I did it, to, uh, how I did these shots when I was collecting data, which it mirrors what Shay was doing when collecting their data. So here we go. I'm going to get these shots ready. Here we go. Boom. All right. So the way I'm going to be preparing this is I've got these Chemex filters that I cut using a 2.25 inch uh, hole cutter, and I have the same basket in both of these porta filters. They're both 18 gram baskets. And so I put the filter on the bottom. I'll grind the coffee up, dump it in here, and then I'm gonna take, just as Shea did, let's see, I'm gonna take my 0.3 millimeter WDT tool, same exact one that Shea used, and I'm gonna be doing deep WDT the way that I do it, which is, I like to call it earth around the sun. So we're gonna do small rotations in a big revolution. And I'm gonna do that all the way up to the surface. Then right after that, I'm gonna give, for when I do porky press, a slight tap, put it on, punch, flip it, punch. And that way I get double the amount of holes because the design flips at 180. And then the other one, I'm gonna do everything the same with a slight tap and all. I won't use a porky press, I'll just tamp. And for the tamping, I'll be using my calibrated, self-leveling, decent V3 tamper. So this is going to allow me to replicate almost exactly uh, the, the, the putt preparation in both. And then we'll pull the shots. We'll see which one, uh, what, what they pulled in, the extraction level, and then taste, and then we'll be done. All right, and here we go. All right, so I just pulled both shots. I, again, I put the Chemex filter at the bottom. I put in the grounds. I deep WDT'd coming up, and then I uh, did a slight tamp. And with the porky press, pressed it, 180, pressed it with this design on the bottom, okay? Same as what Shay used. And then I put a uh, mesh filter on top. I forgot to add that. And I tamped it once more with the calibrated tamper for both of them. All right, so everything was exactly identical. I pulled both shots. Now, interestingly, and I've already refracted them. So the one with the porky press came out in 42 seconds. And that's using that slow bloom profile. Obviously, it's going to take a long time for that. And then with the, uh, with the one without the porky press, it came out in 40 three seconds, so it took one second longer. Now the differences in the extractions is where it's interesting. With the one, and I'm pulling a La Papaya uh, last year's crop that I had frozen my freezer from La Cabra, the one with the porky press came out just over 24% extraction, 24.1. The one without it came out at 23.22% extraction and it was one second longer. So we're getting a, a higher extraction in just, amount, uh, just about the same amount of time, which is really interesting. And Shay yet has another uh, hypothesis there. I've not done enough to really be able to corroborate that evidence, but interesting to look at that article nonetheless that I have down in the caption. Anyway, let's get to tasting, and we're gonna see if there is a difference between this one, we use a porky press on, and the one without. All right, here we go. Actually, I should probably do the one without porky press first. Let me grab a sip of water. All right. Okay, well, as always, my tastings are more so a reflection of all the testing that I've already done. I've pulled, on this specifically, I've pulled at least 40 or 50 side-by-sides. And again, this, this lines up with it. I'm getting much more of that ripe fruit taste and sweetness coming out of the one I use a porky press with than the one without, though they're both incredibly delicious shots. The, it seems that the porky press, what it really does well is when it's really fine settings, it can improve the extraction, but for the most part, it helps improve your consistency. So regardless of what style shot you're pulling, it's going to be, it's not gonna hurt. The question is whether or not you should invest the amount of money. These are like $250. Whether you should invest that amount of money to improve your espresso. If you're someone that pulls normal shots, no, I would not recommend it. If you're someone that every now and then pulls a flow profile shot, no, I would not recommend it. Even if you're someone that pulls frequently flow profile shots, it depends on what you're looking for in your coffee. If you want to squeeze out an extra percentage of extraction, then this is likely for you. If you want to push your, if you're drinking really, really lightly roasted coffees and you need help pushing the extraction, then this could probably help you out a lot. If you're someone that's you drinking medium roast, something that's really soluble, it's likely not going to do that much to your coffee. So keep that in mind. 
I, I, I like this tool. It will definitely be a part of my pup preparation whenever I'm dealing with really lightly roasted coffees and I'm trying to go with crazy high extractions. But if you're doing anything that's coarse enough for a nine bar extraction or a turbo shot or anything along those lines, it's too coarse for this to make a big difference, at least in my experience as well as in Shay's experience. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. If you, you know, if you have one of these around, you know, take, take a look. There's also a more budget friendly one. I didn't do arduous testing with it, but my friend Dennis Sabu out in Austria has made a 3D printed one with, a, uh, with sewing needles in it. So you can check this out and see if it does something similar. I'll be, I'll be playing around with this soon now that I have all the data with the Porky Press. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please you know, drop a like, subscribe, check out my Patreon, check out the caption. I have all of my resources there. I just want to thank you so much. You all rock. Brew something tasty today and cheers.